Okay, we're going across to the vibration facility. This is our separate um, building where we have a large shaker that we use to test spacecraft and instruments to prove that they will survive when we stick them on top of a rocket and shake them about when we're launching them. Although things are very still when they're actually up in space, to get there, of course, they've got to sit on top of hundreds of tons of high explosives, like the blue touch paper, and stand well back. Main engine start, zero, and lift off. So to get there, they have to ride that rocket. So they're seeing very high acceleration levels and vibration levels actually during the launch. So this is our vibration facility, and this is our shaker. At the moment, it's set up with what's called a slip table. This is a big metal plate that's set on a set, set of bearings that moves back and forth. It moves left to right um, as we're standing. At the moment, Dave's just setting it up ready to run a blank test for us. Um, so it's going to be set up to move laterally. So we test instruments and spacecraft in this orientation, and then we're able to flip the whole lot up, put them on top of it, and shake them up and down as well. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one and lift off. Okay, so during a, a big test, we'd have whatever we're testing, whether it's an instrument or a spacecraft, bolted onto the plates or bolted onto the head of the shaker. We'd have a series of accelerometers. They're little sensors that um, look at the acceleration levels, would be spotted all over the test item. Then we'd go through into the control room, set everything up and run a test, and the shaker would shift everything back and forth starting at low frequency, starting at about 10 times per second, going up to about 2,000 hertz, so shaking 2,000 times a second, and we can do G levels up to 10, 20, 30 G, depending on how big, how massive the item that we're shaking is. It is a nervous time. We do occasionally have things break, hopefully only ever during development testing when we're actually deliberately trying to test something as far as it will go. You never actually learn anything about an object until you break it. All you'd know is that it's, you're still within its safety margins. To find out where they are, you've actually got to deliberately break things. So occasionally, that's what we'll do on development models. When you're actually testing flight hardware, the stuff that's going to go up there, then it is a little nerve-wracking. Of course, you've got high confidence that everything's going to be OK, but there's always that slight nervous, nervousness in case it's not. So we recently had the MIRI flight model over here, which was the biggest test that we've done in this facility. It's a very large instrument. Um, and of course, that was fairly nerve-wracking. It's one of the biggest, most valuable projects that we've had here through the department in recent years. So um, that was a big old test, big test campaign. A lot of visitors here from ESA and NASA um, helping with the testing. And it all passed. Um, nothing broke, everything stayed well aligned, and it was a very successful test. And we actually ran it through slightly quicker than we'd originally planned. Um, that, for example, took nearly two weeks. <laughs> okay, so that wire is an accelerometer. So we've got a sensor on the end of here that tells us how fast it's moving, how quickly it's accelerating that's used as part of the feedback loop into the controller to be able to control the machine. Okay, so we're just starting off, starting off at low frequency. It's currently going back and forth about five times a second. So it's gonna stay at this level of acceleration, this level of um, the force that's going into it, and then gradually build up the frequency, the number of times per second that it's oscillating is gonna keep going up. So we've got a display at the top there that you can see the number. This, so it's currently up to seven, eight hertz. So that's going backwards and forwards eight times a second now. And we're gonna build that up until it's up to 100 times a second, going backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. Of course, as we go up in frequency, the amount that it's move, able to move in that time period gets smaller. So you'll gradually see less and less movement but the acceleration that's actually on the table stays the same all the way up. So of course you can now hear it going and you can feel the, the acceleration pounding as well. 
So there we go, that's got all the way up through, stopped and cut off at the end. That would have been a fairly high level test, that would have been quite a shake for a piece of hardware on there. Um, large things we wouldn't test to that sort of level, smaller components that sit inside, objects actually would.